All right. Well, welcome. This is Sarah Kelly, and uh, Sarah, has, I have been the beneficiary of, of a few lunches with Sarah. <laughs> I'm always glad when she calls and says, let's get together, because that means I'm going to get some lunch from Sarah. Uh, so uh, thank you so much. Uh, as much as it was hard for us to get up this morning and uh, the cold weather and the time change and all that stuff, I told our group this morning, at least we didn't have to drive from Greenville this morning on top of all that. So these guys have traveled in this morning and uh, are here just for our service today. So Sarah, welcome. We are so glad to have you and so glad to see you and, and uh, your face and give you the opportunity to see us and, and speak to us. So let's get right on it. Tell us what is Set Free Alliance or who is Set Free Alliance? Yeah, so Set Free is a nonprofit organization. We're based in Greenville, but we work around the world. So we work in two countries in West Africa, so Sierra Leone and Liberia, and then we also work in India. And we like to say that we are an evangelical organization that happens to do humanitarian work. And so in all of the countries that we work in, we are partnered with local pastor partners who go out to share the gospel and plant churches. And we primarily do that by meeting kind of basic human needs. So that looks like drilling clean water wells. It looks like planting churches. It looks like hosting kind of mobile medical clinics. And then one of the bigger aspects of our work that I know we're talking about today is specific to India, working to end child slavery. So rescuing them, reuniting with their families, working to prevent it has become kind of a big cornerstone of what we do. So this is where, where this is kind of new to us. Uh, we have mostly focused on the wells. So showed uh, Sarah the, uh, our bulletin board where we have shown what we have done over the years. Some of you as individuals have done that over the years. Uh, so this rescuing children from slavery is kind of new information for us. Um, and that seems to be the primary need for your ministry right now. Can you tell us a little bit more about what, what that is? Yeah, so to really understand the problem of child slavery specific in India, you have to understand a little bit about how the caste system operates. Um, so India is primarily Hindu, and under kind of that belief system of reincarnation, there's different castes of people. And so at the very bottom, you have what's sometimes called the Dalit, sometimes called untouchable, um, but they are literally considered really less than human. And it's you've either done something in a previous life to deserve this, or you haven't done enough good things to come back. And so kind of here's your lot in life, here's what you deserve. Um, and so there's primarily kind of mine owners, brick factories who will come into villages and give out loans. You know, as you can imagine, if you're untouchable, your you know, opportunities for work are limited, so widespread poverty. They'll take out these loans, and then when the families can't afford them, the children are taken as payment to work off the loans, and then they're, they're resold, um, and it's huge. There's an estimated 18 million people held in slavery in India right now large majority of that is children. Um, and so what we've done is to come in and really work to try to solve the problem in four ways. So the first way is to try to prevent it. You know, I mentioned it's the loans that get most of the kids into slavery. And so we've started a loan repayment program because if they don't owe the loans anymore, they can't take the children into slavery. So that's the first way that we do it. If it's too late, like I said, there's already tons of children who are in slavery. We'll go in and we'll rescue them out of the mines. When they're rescued, we try really hard to be able to reunite them with their families as much as possible. And we're able to do that in about two-thirds of the cases, children who are rescued out of slavery, we're able to reunite them. Um, and then if we can't reunite them, one of the fourth ways that we work on it is we as the children grow up, we want to get them in education so that then they can get a job um, and kind of provide for themselves into adulthood. So a couple of questions. I'm going to go off script just a little bit. Okay. Uh, what age children are we talking about? Um, average age is about 12, but we see between about 9 to 16. Wow. And what kind of they're, they're being put into slavery to do what? 
Um, in the specific area that we're working in, the large majority, just in the one district that we're in, so if you think it's probably the size of like Greenville County, Richland County, kind of that, although in that size you're looking at, I think it's 8 million people in there, They're, it's crowded. Um, they are primarily working in slate mines. And so if you go out into some of the kind of more remote areas, it looks like honestly a giant kind of hole in the ground. It's got a couple crane operators who are paid, but then there's literally at the bottom of the slate mine an assembly line of children who are breaking up the larger pieces of slate and kind of handing, kind of passing rocks out. So this is hard labor. Yes. Yep, very hard labor. They're very, you know, exposed to the elements at night. They oftentimes, you know, sleep in the bottom of the mines and are essentially fed, you know, a starvation diet, just enough to keep them alive, but it is not adequate nutrition. So when you say you rescue them, what, mm -hmm. does, what does that look like? What does that mean? Yeah, it looks a couple different ways. They're originally, and we're actually planning for one in the next couple weeks, um, there's a mine of 500 children that we want to go in and rescue. And that looks honestly a lot like a kind of special military operation. So we plan, we go in at night. <clears throat> there's, you know, vans that we've stashed kind of in the bushes far away so they can't see. Um, we tend to time them around kind of different holidays, so perhaps there's not as much supervision. People tend to be out kind of celebrating. Um, and we'll, we've done some work before because we don't want our pastors to show up to rescue the kids and the kids think they're being kidnapped again. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll, they know we're coming, we'll show up, we'll put literally ladders into the bottom of the mine and pull the kids out. They'll walk through the night to the vans where then they'll be taken into safe houses for a couple weeks until the kind of hunt for them dies down. Um, that's how it's been, that's how we're planning on it. Over the past couple years though, honestly, I said we've pastor with, we've partnered with local pastor partners and we have done so much work kind of sharing the gospel and planting churches in this area that how, how we've been getting a lot of the children's rescued recently is that the mine supervisors, sometimes their wife, are starting to come to faith and kind of having this crisis of, you know, this Jesus that I'm starting to follow and trying to live with is in complete contradiction with, you know, what I do day to day in owning humans. And so they are sometimes starting to sneak them out. It's not uncommon in the middle of the night you know, for churches to be dropped off at the doorsteps of one of our churches because we've developed this reputation of this is a safe place for children to go. So after they're rescued, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming that when you say we, you're not necessarily talking about you and Andrew. No, no, uh, I very much stand out in India, so yeah. no. <laughs> so these are all local pastors, local believers mm -hmm. yep. uh, that, that do this work. Yeah, our, the organization that we're partnered with in India, there's a network of over 9,000 pastors, and so it's groups of them that we work with. And so once those kids are rescued, what happens? Once they're rescued, like I said, they're taken into safe houses. They're immediately given medical attention. As you can imagine, if you've been working with rocks, most of them don't have you know, gloves or shoes. Their hands and feet are in pretty bad condition. Sometimes there's infection, so they immediately get medical, um, medical attention. We, it's one of the conundrums of working in India. Child slavery is technically illegal but it's rampant. And so all of the kids who have been working in mines are off the books. As soon as we rescue them, they become under legal care of our partner organization. So there's a fair amount of paperwork that has to be filed. Um, it takes about two weeks for kind of all of that to go. Um, and then we start because they're, you know, on average nine to 12, they know where they're from. And so a lot of it's, you know, asking them questions, trying to figure out where their families are. Cause again, it's our biggest goal to be able to reunite them. So when, I'm going to go off script just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. when, when those kids are rescued and they're put in safe places, how many kids are in a safe place? Um, initially, it's about 40 or so will be in a safe house at a time during that kind of two-week so period. So you're responsible for, 
for their every need. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So during that initial, you know, right out of the rescue, again, they're on safe houses because the mine owners aren't thrilled that we just took their workforce. So they're looking for them. Um, so the couple weeks they're in groups of 40. After those initial two weeks, that's when we start to figure out, can we find their parents? If we can, is it going to be a good fit? We don't want to reunite them only for them to be sold. Um, so doing a little bit of due diligence. Um, Set Free is currently caring for 9,000 kids who have been rescued out of slavery. Um, so after that two weeks, work to reunite them. If we can't reunite them or if we can't reunite them immediately, we've got a central campus where 1,200 kids are all housed together. Um, and then otherwise, they're in different church homes. So it would be like Beulah hosting 20 or so children kind of in your you know, fellowship hall or, and it would be kind of members from the congregation or sometimes a pastor and his wife caring for the churches are smaller in India. So usually 10 to 12 children. So, so let me, you said right now you have 9,000 9, kids that you're responsible for feeding and, yep. and supporting and hopefully helping them find a way back home. Mm -hmm. um, so this changes our whole perspective, right? Uh, this is more as, as, as important as providing fresh water is, and you still do that. Yes, yep. So this is not in place of that. I told Sarah, I said, we want to give a gift. We're going to make an emphasis to do whatever we can to support this ministry, but I wanted her to determine how best the funds could be used. And so I also wanted you to hear how I think she thinks how best the funds could be used. Um, so maybe you could just kind of pick up there. Mm -hmm. how, can, how can a little church in Hopkins, South Carolina help? Yeah, um, so tons of different ways. There's, I think first of all, you can pray for us. Um, pray for both our stateside staff, but more importantly, pray for our pastor partners. They're the ones on the ground doing the work, particularly in India, Christian persecution is very real. Um, so pray for you know, their safety and strength. You can tell someone about us. There's, if something that, you know, I've said has spoken to you, one thing I've realized is it's really hard to donate to Set Free if you don't know that we exist. And so if something, you know, has kind of struck a chord with you, if you can share it with kind of friends and family. And then third, like I mentioned, there are 18 million people in slavery, we are literally only limited in the work that we do by the amount of funding that we receive. So make a donation, give is the third way. So if we, if we raise our $5,000 goal, mm -hmm. what does that do to help you? So $5,000, like I said, we're planning on going in and rescuing an entire mine worth of children. Um, it's about 500. And so there's some initial rescue costs. We need to rent the vans. We need to secure the safe houses. Like I said, there's paperwork. Um, but then the ongoing monthly cost, it cost about $58 a child for us on monthly to be able to care for them. So your $5,000 would be, go a long way, um, towards supporting the monthly needs of the children who have been rescued. I'm, I'm so glad that you came. I'm so glad that you gave us this information because I have not done a good job representing what you do. Um, we try over over the through emails or through the board or Facebook, other places. Uh, we get specific uh, prayer concerns from Set Free Alliance uh, on a regular basis when, especially emergencies come up and they need something to happen, or they need to raise a certain amount of money to make this happen. Uh, we try to push that out to you. So I, you know, I I want you to to start paying attention to those things that we push out to you uh, because they are significant and, and they are very timely, as, especially as it relates to Set Free Alliance. Uh, I want us to take, Andrew, I'm going to ask you to come up too because I, I just want to pray for you guys and um, kind of solidify the partnership that, that we have had over the years. Uh, Andrew's new to, to the staff at Set Free Alliance. And um, so he's still learning a lot and, and uh, learning what his role is. And, uh, but I believe you're the partner, what is your title? 
partnership coordinator. So Andrew may be the face that we start seeing a lot. Um, but I just want to pray for these guys and give you an opportunity. They have some, some information uh, out in the front and also at the back. And if you want to speak to them, I hope that you will uh, and, and encourage them. And, uh, you know, and then hopefully I hope that you will give, that we can give them more than $5,000 uh, at the end of this month. But let me just pray for them. Father, I thank you that you have first of all come like us you came as a savior for us and you have spread your people all around this earth and Lord you have given churches and believers and individuals responsibilities uh, to, to be faithful to be obedient but you've also given us opportunity to partner with those that are not in our immediate presence. I thank you for the way you brought this church and uh, Water of Life and now Set Free Alliance into a partnership these, this past decade. I thank you for the way that this church has, has reached out financially, has reached out with their prayers, uh, has done so much to support this ministry over the years. And I thank you for the opportunity to to have Sarah here to answer questions and to, to educate us on exactly what it is that we're partnering with. So Lord, I pray for their work. I pray for their team. I pray for that vast number of pastors in India who are literally risking their life and their livelihoods and everything for the gospel. They're risking their lives to, to rescue uh, children who, who are, are being mistreated and treated as if they're not even human. And I thank you for the heart of, of those men and those, church, those believers that are there. Thank you for the partnership that you have made with Set Free and those pastors. Lord, I just pray that your work continue in a dramatic way, in a way that can't even be imagined by our, our minds. But ultimately, that through all of that work, that a great God is shown. That a loving, merciful Savior is shown. And so, Lord, I just pray your blessings on Sarah, her leadership with this uh, ministry. I pray for Andrew and the other team members that, that, Lord, you would be honored and glorified in everything that is done and that you would use them in a mighty way. I pray that you would bring other partners along to, to join in with them and that you would provide them the finances and the, the people and the materials and all that's needed for these things. I pray, God, that you would go before them in every decision. Bless us today. Thank you so much for the opportunity to meet with them today. And we just pray your blessings on this church family and we pray your blessings on the work and the the obedience to, to the call to Set Free Alliance. We love you. We thank you for loving us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys.